Bomet water, Gusi water, Kisumu, Kwale, and Nyeri water and sanitation companies. Mr. Speaker, before I make my contribution, I wish to join other leaders in uh, extending my best wishes to the students of Tana River County who are sitting their exams and for the rest of Kenya, wishing them well and wishing them the very best. We all pass through there, so just take heart and do the best you can and God will be with you. Mr. Speaker, secondly, I wanted to acknowledge the industry hard work that has been put by the chair of this committee. Mr. Speaker, they have done a tremendous job as a team. And I, I have appeared before them when Tana River was appearing, and I know that we have a very capable Chairman Ososi, uh, Vice Chairman uh, Professor Ojienda, and the rest of the team. We thank you because you have made this Senate proud. Mr. Speaker, many issues have been raised about the companies that uh, have been mentioned and whose report is before this Senate for consideration. Mr. Speaker, I want to probably pick two issues so that uh, I can focus my attention on those issues. Mr. Speaker, there's a big complaint amongst Kenyan people that there's no water on their taps. And Mr. Speaker, I remember many years ago when the reforms of water were underway. At that time, the Minister for Water was the very honorable Martha Karua. And she brought this idea to Parliament at that time that we need to segregate these companies. We need to create water companies. We need to create water bodies that are going to be able to manage water in various levels. Some of them were at regional and some of them were national. Obviously, from those days to to date, a lot of changes have taken place, Mr. Speaker. But the principle remains the same, that if this water is managed at a lower level, and this, in this case, at the county level, then we should be able to have people who have a feeling for the people who are directly connected, who will not steal the money for water, mismanage the resources for water, so that the county can have water flowing in the taps. Mr. Speaker, this has been a challenge everywhere. And we have been told, Mr. Speaker, that one of the problems is that, and when we speak to the management, uh, like the one in Tana River, they tell you, we still depend on the old infrastructure. And Mr. Speaker, the infrastructure that has been there is the one that was built by the county governments, uh, not county government, county councils, Mr. Speaker. And county councils have, have been gone for more than 10 years. But still these water companies depend on that infrastructure. And Mr. Speaker, we therefore have this challenge of non-revenue water. And revenue water has been told by our able chairman when moving. Is that water which nobody can account for? It is there. It has been utilized, but nobody can account for it. So, Mr. Speaker, we have also been told that these companies are 100% owned by the county governments, which effectively means, Mr. Speaker, that for the infrastructure to be upgraded, for the infrastructure to be where we want it to be, the new investment must be put into the infrastructure of water. 
Mr. Speaker, it's not enough for us to just blame the management of these water companies. We must start thinking of solutions. And Mr. Speaker, for new money to be put in these water bodies, then it means, Mr. Speaker, we must start thinking of a way of ring fencing some money which comes from the Senate to go down to the governors and they be told that this money is for water and you cannot touch this money. Mr. Speaker, if we could develop that kind of legislation, that is one way forward and we must start thinking around that issue because it appears that if that is not done, like one of our senators here has said, it's the same money. The, the money goes to the county revenue fund, and the same county revenue fund is used to pay for, for trips by governors, officials of the counties, and so on. And the money doesn't reach for development of water. Even where they have collected something, you find that that money doesn't go there. Mr. Speaker, we had the same problems with, with, uh, with dispensaries and health centers. And you remember, Mr. Speaker, when we were passing the laws that involved the universal health care laws, we said that some money needs to be left at the dispensary level, at the health center level, so that if a fence has broken down, the local committee there is able to deal with that matter. If it is uh, a car that has a puncture, the local committee is able to withdraw money from the revenues they are developing, they are, they are collecting there, and do something about it. Mr. Speaker, what is so difficult about us also creating some serious thinking following that model around ring fencing money for water so that Money we, sh we vote here can go down there, yes, to the governors, who are the people who are supposed to, by law, arrange the budgets. But in between, some money be ring fenced for water so that infrastructure of water can grow. Because no matter what we say, Mr. Speaker, no matter what we do, if the infrastructure of water that we want to use in 2024 is the same infrastructure in Tana River County, for example, that was set up in 1960s by the Tana River County Council. It will never work, Mr. Speaker. We must start thinking as a Senate of a way of pushing money so that infrastructure can be upgraded. Mr. Speaker, there's another thought also that we need to to think because this is a house of ideas. Mr. Speaker, 100% we have been told is owned by, the shares are owned by the county governments. So in Tan River County, Tawasco is owned 100% by the county government of Tana River. Uh, and Mr. Speaker, the county government of Tana River will tell you we don't have money to invest for infrastructure. Money is being delayed from coming from the national government. Our equitable share is little. The River government will tell you we do not have sufficient funds to do fresh investments. Then, Mr. Speaker, why can't we start focusing on finding a way within the law to unlock that 100% shareholding? Why can't we think of privatizing part of those shares so that those who are interested in investing in water can come in and take over management. They can buy in 30% shares within the companies. They can buy in 40%. They'll be present in the management and in the boards of our, our, county, our county boards for water. So that, Mr. Speaker, a person who even may be benevolent, if you've made your money, maybe you made your money abroad, or you made your money in legal practice, or you made your money in, 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 uh, in, in, in investment elsewhere, whatever, whatever you do, 
and then you wish to purchase uh, shares within the water companies of your county and you become a shareholder because you, you, you want to do something for your county. And Mr. Speaker, if you have reached that level where 100 million shillings is not an issue with you, 500 million is not an issue, and you want to retire, and you feel like you want to do something special, Mr. Speaker, it is possible. We, we must find a way in which we can create law that allows even benevolent investors to put in money within our water companies. So that, Mr. Speaker, we shouldn't be... I, I, I pity some of our managers in these water companies. They'll come before Chairman Ososi and tell them, we, have been, we, we are angling for World Bank to give us this money. We are angling for, I don't know what other grants to get. So we need to, to meet this and this and this and this and this and this requirement. When you look at it, the money they are angling for is 50 million. It's 100 million. You know, Mr. Speaker, and they, they come to Nairobi, they tell you, help us achieve this and the other and the other. And it is, it is money that many Kenyans here can raise if the law allowed them. And then we have this attitude that it's only Muzungu money that will be able to save us. So people keep on talking about monies from out, monies from out, monies from out. In the meantime, there's a lot of money here within this country, in Uganda, in Tanzania, in Somalia, which if properly structured, can be put into these water companies and we'll be able to improve infrastructure and our people will be happy to pay those reasonable bills if they're having the service, Mr. Speaker. Because this is the problem. Nobody wants to pay water bills. Why? Why? Because there is no water that flows through your, your tap. And the next time the water flows through your tap, they bring you a bill for all the months that the water never flowed through your tap. We had an experience, Mr. Speaker, in Tana River County. When the head of state was visiting, suddenly water started flowing in the taps. Head of state visits, Mr. Speaker. Water started flowing in the taps. You know, it, does, it shouldn't be that way, Mr. Speaker. And if the problem is investment, then we should create opportunities for people to invest in infrastructure so that these monies can be used by management to create opportunities for our water bodies to function Mr. Speaker, having said that, I would like to also say that water bodies, even with the difficulties that they're experiencing, audit is showing us in this Senate that there are some water companies that are just doing the wrong things, you know, just wrong things. And some of these are not difficult to comply with. The law, the National Cohesion Integration Act, Mr. Speaker, has said that if within that county there are some majority tribes, you make sure that 30% should not be occupied by uh, one tribe alone so that the other people can have opportunities, Mr. Speaker, to be employed. Now, we have many water companies, Mr. Speaker, that have totally ignored these rules. And in this report, Goosey Water Company has been mentioned specifically. But Gusi Water Company is not alone when they are told that 80% of your employees are in, in contradiction of the National uh, Cohesion Integrity Commission Act. But it's not alone. There are many companies, Mr. Speaker, including my own Tana River uh, Tawasco, Tana Water and Sanitation Company, Mr. Speaker, where they have totally ignored the provisions of the uh, National uh, Integration, uh, Commission Integration Act, where you find the people who are employed are from one side. You don't find a proper mix. Small tribes that exist within What are the consequences of flagrant disobedience of the law? Mr. Speaker, we make recommendations in this Senate. But there are no consequences. People come, they tell us they will improve, 
And next year they come, they are the same and there are no consequences. Mr. Speaker, I am asking that it is time we started thinking about tightening the laws on people who are flagrantly disobeying the law. Here, we have been told that in terms of financial management of these companies, you have many of them which are getting unqualified opinion of the Auditor General. Now, if the Auditor General says that the opinion they are giving in terms of financial management of your, of, of your monies, the funds that have been made to you is unqualified opinion. Mr. Speaker, and then no consequences visited upon them. Instead, in the next meeting, they bring some documents. Like the chairman said, they generate documents so that they tell you, oh, we, we, we were only told our opinion was only bad because we didn't have this and this other document. Now we have them. I like the stand Mr. Chairman has taken that the documentation that have not been assessed by the Auditor General should not be accepted by the Senate Committee. Uh, people should go through the processes, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, there should be consequences because after we make recommendations, there should be consequences. I always feel very let down by some of these guys. ESCC sits in the Public Accounts Committee. They have a permanent representative there and they are told there is this a problem, this is a query. ESCC moves there, they sit there, collect allowances and they do nothing, Mr. Speaker. And there are other bodies there. You find they come and sit, they listen, and recommendations are made. Instead of action being taken in real time, the reason that you are put in that committee so that you can take action in real time, nothing happens. Mr. Speaker, we want to see action on these audit reports. Consequences must visit those who are flagrantly Bleaching, uh, breaching the National Cohesion Act. Water companies that are not following the law, Mr. Speaker, they should feel the pressure of the Senate. Mr. Speaker, a few people must be arrested for breaching the, the Public Financial Management Act. Mr. Speaker, if this happens, then we shall have some discipline. Aside from the investment, we need enforcement of the law, Mr. Speaker, so that we can bring some form of discipline and direction from the Senate on these water companies. We've been told water is life. And an appeal has been made here that senators, we must take interest in the management of water companies in our places where we come from. And I accept that that's a good appeal. But we also need from the National Committee enforcement. If somebody is, is not doing his work, surely let a few people take personal responsibility. If this starts happening, Mr. Speaker, we shall be able to create proper management of our water companies. And our people shall receive water, the water they have been using. They, have be, they will be built for water that they have been using. Mr. Speaker, why can't we create water tokens so that just like electricity, I buy my token and I know that after I've used 1,000 1, or 500, I need to replace instead of waiting at the end of month, Mr. Speaker, time has come, we use technology, to make sure our water companies are also functional. So we should not only invest in the infrastructure, but also in technology, so that people can pay for services that have actually been rendered. We are doing better in electricity, but we can also do good in water sector. And this means we must start...